Welcome to Lesson 1 on Using Synapse. This video series is brought to you by Providence Imaging Center in Anchorage and Eagle River. Providence Imaging Center is a provider of comprehensive outpatient radiology services, home to Alaska's most powerful 3-Tesla MRI and independently accredited in Anchorage by the American College of Radiology in all our service offerings. This teaching module is for providers who currently use remote access at Providence and who want speedy and direct access to their patients' images without having to view them in Provport. As a reminder, to use Synapse, you will need a PC or Mac with internet capability, your key fob, the six-digit number generator, and your username and password issued by the IS Training Department at Providence. In Lesson 1, we'll make sure you have a separate Synapse icon on your remote access desktop. If you don't have it, you'll know whom to contact. Secondly, we'll demonstrate how to keep Synapse available all day long on your office PC. Lastly, we'll demonstrate how Synapse can remember your search terms, which will make it much more user-friendly. To learn more about this training, go to our website at provimaging.com or contact Nathan Switzer at 212-6032. Let's get started. You may want to follow along by logging into your remote access account right now to verify for yourself what is being shared today. First, use your credentials and your little number generator to log in to Providence Remote Access by typing myweb.provak.org directly into your Internet Explorer address bar. Now we are looking at the application's portal itself. You're probably already familiar with Provport, the icon that looks a bit like a cruise ship's window. Provport is the current way to view all typed medical records generated at Providence facilities, and it does have the ability to view radiology images as well. However, there are certain limitations to viewing images this way. If you want to see your patient's images within minutes of their exam's completion with the least hassle, then you'll want to launch Synapse directly. It does not require an additional login process, and it can stay active on your computer all day long. This is what the Synapse icon looks like if it is present on your desktop. If it is not, stop here and contact Nathan Switzer at Providence Imaging Center, who will ask the Providence MIS department to make it available to you. If you need to look at actual images, you will definitely want this direct Synapse access. Now, click the Synapse icon once to launch the software. In a few seconds, depending on your internet connection speed, you will see this opening Synapse screen with several folder choices listed on the left side. To keep Synapse open all day long on your computer, do not close this window. You may want to minimize it by clicking the underscore symbol of its window like this. As long as you do not close the program by clicking the X at the top right of the screen, it will stay active and refresh itself periodically with the latest patient information. Your application screen will eventually time out and log you off. I'll manually log off right now to demonstrate what it looks like. You'll notice, however, that I can still use Synapse as long as I don't close the Synapse program. Now let's return to our Synapse window and double click the fourth folder from the top of the list labeled All Patients. This brings up a screen with a full page of patient names, gender, and birth dates in no particular order. When you use Synapse, you will be looking for a specific patient information. I will next show you how to look up a patient with a popular name and change the properties of Synapse itself to make this task easier. This is a change you'll only make once, but let's show you why it's a good thing to do first. On the screen, let's look up information for a fictitious patient of mine named John Smith. If you are following along in your Synapse software, be sure to select a patient who's been to your practice. I'll begin by typing John's last name in the first input field under the heading Patient Name. I'm typing a comma after his last name and then his first name, John. After hitting Enter, I get this list of about 30 patients, all with variations of the name Smith, John. I find the John Smith I'm looking for by matching his name with the correct date of birth and double-click on his name. 
His specific record opens, listing all the radiology exams he's had at various Providence facilities. After viewing a recent KUB x-ray, which I won't demonstrate right now, I go back to the All Patients search folder to look up another patient. I do this by clicking the Up folder button at the top of my screen, located here. Just as soon as I find myself back to this screen, I realize I wanted to look at another KUB Mr. Smith had done to compare it to the study I just reviewed. Alas, my search information is gone, and I have to type his name again. If you are following along and your patient's information is still there, you can ignore the next few seconds of this video. Let's make Synapse always remember my last search field information, so I don't have to waste keystrokes. We are now going to go into the Synapse program properties to make sure this never happens again with a few simple mouse clicks. Do this. Hit your up folder button three times with the left mouse click to get to a screen that looks somewhat like this. Right click on the Synapse program information and select properties with your left mouse button, the last entry in the list. The Synapse Properties box will open with several tabs to choose from. Left mouse click the Synapse View Settings tab. You'll now be presented with several options you can select. We're going to check the Save Filter Settings checkbox like this. Click OK at the bottom of this gray box and you're done. To get back to the Synapse Program, double click the Synapse Program name. Now double click the word Synapse that appears on the next screen and you'll be back to your folder list. Let's check to see that our changes have taken effect. I'll double click the All Patients folder once again and type Smith, John. And hit Enter. Next, I'll double click the correct John Smith to open up his record of exams. Satisfied with what I've seen here, I click my Up Folder button to get back to the All Patients folder. And voila! Synapse has remembered my search terms. So let's summarize what we learned today. We verified whether you have the Synapse icon on your application desktop. If you don't, please contact me with your remote access username and I can have MIS install the icon. We learned also how to keep Synapse open all day long without having to log in to the portal every time it logs you out. Finally, we changed the properties of Synapse to make it more user-friendly for searching. Thanks for taking the time to learn how to make Synapse faster and more user-friendly. If you have a tip you'd like to see, let us know. One last tip, not directly related to Synapse. If you are a current Provport user, you will want to hear this. Provport will be replaced by a new software program called Epic Care Link on February 26, 2011. As of that date, patient records will no longer be current in Provport. Epic Care Link will be an improved way to view the information you need and will allow you to order imaging studies directly without having to call us. To learn more about this change, go to our website at provimaging.com slash epiccare where you can download the application. Turning in the applications will ensure that you have seamless access to your patient's information. To get a preview of how Epic Care Link will work, simply go back to your application desktop. You may need to log back in to see the applications with your key fob. Now click the InProv icon which launches Providence's intranet site. Here you'll get access to training modules that will highlight the Epic Care Link software. To find this online training once the Providence Intranet homepage comes up, click the large Epic button on the left side of your screen. Move your mouse to the right side of the screen to the link labeled Epic Provider Training. Here you'll find a list of the Epic Office Staff training modules currently available. Scroll down to the right side of your screen to where it says Epic Care Link Courses. Click one and be patient for it to load. Then follow the on-screen prompts. Enjoy and see you next time.